This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. We'll hit up the McClarty Daniel hotline right now. Aaron Torres is standing by. AT, good to talk with you. Uh, you ju- you might have just seen the uh, preseason media poll come through. Well, throw it away because Vanderbilt got the fourth most first place votes, and this poll might not matter. <laughs> wow. Talk about it. Uh, I guess it's not elitism. Is it reverse elitism? Because they're elite, you know, like just, just not even giving them a shot before the season. I mean, listen. I know Georgia's the two-time national champ, and I get, you know, Tennessee's coming off a 10-win year, and I get that in the other division, there's Alabama and LSU, but to just, to, to feel, this is the time where everybody, where hope springs a throw. I thought that was the whole point of SEC media days. Sure. Everybody, everybody's a believer. It's just a year it's, since Clark Lee said he was going to have Vanderbilt as the best football program in the country, and apparently there's eight people that joined him. But the, yeah, you know what? Wow. I'm sell, I'm buying what you're selling. Either that, or everybody just wants to have a sense of humor about this whole thing. And we know what preseason polls matter anyway. But I mean, the, 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 this is what it all led to. This is what SEC media day, days led to. All the NIL talk. All and I think another aspect of this whole week, which was interesting to me, is how the week was kind of bookended by Greg Sankey basically petitioning publicly Congress to help fix NIL laws. I know that they, they lobbied about a month ago about that. And then there's a proposal that comes out from the Senate on Thursday. That also felt like that's what SEC Media Days was about, too. I heard there was a lot of AI conversation, too. Was somebody really going around asking coaches if they'll be replaced by AI robots? That was what somebody told me was going on there. It was the Vanderbilt 8. Yeah, they were trying to be, they were trying to be funny. <laughs> Maybe that's, maybe that's why. Maybe that's how Vanderbilt's going to win. Maybe they have these robots that we don't know about. I will say, um, on a much more actual sports-related topic, a little bit surprised. Not, not surprised. Surprised isn't the right word. But for all the LSU buzz and, oh, my goodness. By the way, I love Brian Kelly. I've said it many times. I was at UConn when he was at Cincinnati. I've been following his career ever since. But it felt like the last six weeks or so, there's just been a lot of you know, LSU might actually be the team in the West that we all got to focus on. And then the poll comes out and Alabama's pick to win the West. That would be my pick as well, Alabama. But I just find it interesting on, a, on, an, on an actual football topic that we've spent, it feels like the last six, seven weeks, talking a lot about is LSU, have they surpassed Alabama? Apparently the voters disagree uh, with Alabama being picked to finish first. Well, I mean, I'm seeing we, we, we know that they're not going to be dynamic at quarterback. Uh, they might have some questions on the offensive line just because they don't have a lot of experience there. But that means there's a lot of talent there. Uh, it's not to say that there's not a lot of talent as far as quarterbacks concerned. It's just not as much as usual and nowhere near the level of talent we've seen quarterback wise from Alabama. So I guess the feeling is they're going to have to win some games in the 20s. I can still see them pulling it off. But part of this is also just you trust the coach. You know, Nick Saban yeah. has kind of earned that now, hasn't he? A thousand percent, Phil. And, and I think some of Nick Saban's comments at Media Day were interesting. And I know, you know, we, we've kind of conditioned ourselves to believe that coaches aren't going to say anything of value at Media Days. But I thought, you know, him talking, you know, both in one-on-one interviews, but also I believe at the main podium about, hey, I thought we got a little too Bryce reliant last year. That wasn't a knock on Bryce Young. It was just the reality of we have this, this, this program-changing quarterback or this number one NFL draft pick. And I think we relied a little bit too much on him last year. We want to get back to running the football, playing complimentary football. Um, and so I, I think Nick Saban's quotes are kind of interesting in how he sees this team and what he feels like the quote-unquote pitfalls were last year in a season where they went 11-2. and two. So they're really interesting to me, Phil. I, I do think the, the LSU stuff is a little bit much for me. And I think what the, the anti, if you want to call it that, Alabama stuff, it does to me, Phil, come down to – very much for the first time since Jalen Hurts' freshman year, there isn't an obvious either returnee, a quarterback, or obvious heir apparent. There are talented guys in that locker room, but I also think it is fair to say, hey, wait a second now, Tyler Buckner, who wasn't going to win the starting job at Notre Dame, comes in, he doesn't transfer there if he isn't led to believe that he has a real shot to win that starting job. So you're right, Bill. I mean, this might look like kind of an old-school Alabama team, where it is a lot about the run game, a lot about the defense, and, and maybe they don't have that elite game-changing talent at quarterback like they have the last probably seven, eight years. 
Hey, Aaron, will you will you watch any of this Women's World Cup? I saw the the U.S. Women's National Team was uh, seventy five hundred to one in their opening match against mm. Vietnam. Is there any is there anybody out there that could beat the United States girls team? Yeah, you're asking you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, I, I respect what they've done back to back championships, but you know, one, I think the time frame with what you know, most of the games on in the middle of the night here. I think it's going to make it a little tougher to watch. And then, you know, I, I'd be lying if I said I knew anything about the field. I know the U.S. is the best, and I think it's a testament to what we have a country, what we as a country have done to invest in women's sports. But no, I have, uh, <laughs> I, I can't. Uh, I'm much more comfortable handicapping uh, Vanderbilt's spot in the SEC title race than I am who's, who are the top contenders for the U.S. Uh, yeah. in this year's World Cup. Same. What about uh, your boy Kimba Walker going to AS Monaco? Uh, do you think that that could be a theme for s- some more kind of aging veterans going over? I mean, you're seeing it going to the Saudi League as far as in soccer and stuff, but then you got uh, Kimba Walker going to, to Monaco. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can really say is that unfortunately about the last four or five years of his career, he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. So, you know, I think what that would say to me, that more than anything, is how often, like, you know, I think when we talk at an NBA draft and, you know, an Anthony Black declaring or Jordan Walsh declaring or whatever, you know, you kind of just think that there's all these spots in perpetuity in the NBA. What is it, you know, 30 teams, 15 walker spots, I think that comes out to 450 spots across the league. And uh, it's interesting to, to, to bring it to Arkansas. I remember talking to Coach Walsh about this years ago, you know, when players would come to him, hey, I'm thinking about going, I'm thinking about saying, what should I do? And he said, you know, if you're – a lottery pick, a first round pick, absolutely you should go. But he says, as a second rounder, you know there might only be one roster spot for twenty guys, and then not only are you competing, you know, for, for that spot, but next year there's a whole new group of guys coming in. So, so I, I think what that story would say to me, Matt, is just like how hard it is to to get to the NBA, but then more importantly, stay in the NBA because you have a guy who's a multiple time All Star. Um, was the face of a franchise even just two or three years ago who now really is out of NBA options. A lot of that, of course, is injuries and things of that nature. But I think that's probably what that story would do. Let me, let me bring this back to college football for a moment here. Uh, Aaron, yeah. you get this conversation um, in the NFL with the whole Saquon Barkley situation and, and that running backs are just – they're. I don't want to – should I use the term woefully underpaid because supposedly the market is supposed to set itself – now, you know, yesterday and the day before, you had Rocket Sanders and Quinshawn Junkins both asked about salaries in the NFL for that position. I don't think Rocket wanted to touch it too much because he just talked about being focused on this next year. Judkins did talk about it a little bit and said that it's concerning. The thing I wonder, so we know what NFL running backs are making. And this is like, this is the major difference. When I hear coaches say, we have an NFL model. It's like, no, you don't. You don't have an NFL model. <laughs> Everybody knows what the NFL running backs are making. That's because it's collectively bargained. It's, it's public information. Uh, sure. Nobody knows what running backs in college football are making. I would be fascinated to see. I bet you that Rocket and Judkins are two of the most highly paid players on their teams with NIL. But if they were NFL players, they probably wouldn't even be in the top six. So your point is that NIL could help keep an elite running back in college? I don't know if it'll help because the money's still going to be better in the NFL. It's just the way that it's valued sure. is differently. It's probably valued monetarily uh, better in a. You're not making more money as a college running back. It's just gotcha. you're probably making more money comparative comparatively to the rest of your team, especially guys like Judkins and and Rocket. Comparatively, <laughs> like Saquon Barkley. He, he's got 34% if Saquon, of the snaps for his team. And, and if Saquon Barkley can't get paid, then then there's definitely there's something wrong because he's a top two running back in the league. No doubt. And so I, I see where you're going with this, Phil. I, I agree. Um, and I think what it speaks to is, you know, and, and I think we've probably seen this in college football the last two years, is there's this, you know, kind of, listen, the thing that I've learned doing this as long as I have, Everything is cyclical, right? You know, it, you, you think that something's going to be some way forever. Like, I remember when Steph Curry got to the Warriors, and it was, you know, well, we got to find our Steph Curry. And it's like, well, there's literally one of those walking the planet. And so why I bring it up is because in the NBA, it felt like, even across basketball, it felt like this year, 
size was more valued than ever before. We talked about this when Anthony Black got drafted. You know, my UConn Huskies, every starter was six foot five or bigger. NBA, you know, Nikola Jokic, you know, that's a big, big, big team in the Denver Nuggets. So why I bring it up is I don't think it's going to change in the NFL because the, the quarterback is just so valued. But I do think in college football, I do think there is something to the fact that, that stylistically, I, I think we're going back a little bit where, you know, for forever it was basketball on turf and, you know, even Alabama, they, you know, they, we just talked about the quarterbacks. But now what did I just say? Alabama wants to get to more of a kind of a balanced offense. Georgia has done it with, off, you know, with, with run game and defense. Michigan has done it with run game and defense. What is the, what is the, the one buzzword that we use with Sam Pittman constantly, physicality at the line of scrimmage. So, I, I, you know, I, I think to your point, Phil, I can't speak as much to the NFL because I, I don't think it's just going to change because of the, the salary structure. But I do think that, to your point, like, those are probably some of the most valuable players in the NIL world because they're productive, they're named brands, they touch the football. Um, in the NFL, it's just about production. Salary is just about production. It's not about what you do, what you bring to the community, whatever. So I think it's a really interesting point that at these big schools where NIL is, is you know, the name of the game, the idea that a running back could be very, very, very valuable to those teams and those communities, not only on the field, but also off the field and, again, with NIL. And I, and I, th- I do think it's kind of the guaranteed money to your performance base. They want more guaranteed money. Hey, uh, AT, what's up with uh, Sidonio? Is is he going to be in the NBA? Because I know he left early, and uh, I, I haven't heard anything on him. What, what What's up with him? From UConn? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's tough, man. It's tough, you know. And this is like, and, you know, I, I don't know if you guys ever get a chance to, to speak with Coach Moss, but, like, uh, I, I, I just – He's just such a great person to talk to about how hard it is. And by the way, I know when you do get to speak to him, you want to talk to him about Arkansas, not what he's done the last, you know, 25 years of his career. But why I bring it up is because, like, he's just so good on how hard it is to make the NBA. And so with, with Snowgo, like, you know, I, I, he's a, he was a, rip, was a phenomenal college player, uh, but he goes undrafted, and now your back's up against the wall. And so he had a very good summer league. But again, you know, I think this is the misnomer about the NBA is there's 15 roster spots. And I think going into any season, there could only be one, two, maybe none available because of guaranteed contracts. And so it's unfortunate, but it's kind of the reality. It's the same in in Major League Baseball, the same in the NFL, is that it's not always the best, you know, 15 in the NBA or 25 in Major League Baseball. Sometimes you're paying a guy an absorbent amount of money, an exorbitant amount of money, excuse me, and you got to play them. And so that's kind of the, the uphill battle for a guy like Adonis Sonogo, who was awesome in college, um, awesome, you know, in summer league, but he still is going to have his back up against the wall to get a roster spot. By the way, it's not just him. It's Jordan Walsh. It's Ricky Council. It's guys like that. So it just speaks to, again, what I said a few minutes ago. is like it's really, really, really hard to make and stay in the NBA, and I think we spend so much time talking about the draft and one and done, and we look at all these mock drafts, but I think sometimes people take that for granted. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.